Right, so squirrels collect nuts, uh, dogs collect bones, Dysons collect dust, and I collect fragrance. Okay, you know what? I've come to the conclusion that there's a bit of a collector in all of us. You know, whether we collect coins or stamps or CDs, DVDs, Nike air trainers, whatever it is, there's a bit of a collector in us all. And what happens is the things that we collect, we kind of become experts in that particular field. So, you know, whoever collects Nike air trainers will be able to list off when they were launched, the certain uh, the sizes that you can get them in and how much they're worth and that sort of thing. Okay, well, I'm going to give you a little bit of background in these uh, videos about fragrance. Okay, I've got a, an extensive collection and this evening we're just going to look at one fragrance. In fact, I'm going to dedicate this review to two things. First of all, a legendary fragrance and secondly, to a guy who sort of very, very recently brought it to my attention. Okay, so let me set the scene. I had to go to the post office uh, a couple of days ago and I walked into the post office and uh, there was a queue, obviously social distancing, there were two metres apart, there was maybe three or four people in the queue. So I went and joined the back of this queue and within a few seconds of being in this queue, I was like, oh, wait a minute. A, that smells good. And B, I was thinking, I know that smell. Anyway, as the queue moved along, as the person got served and, and they all moved along, I moved along to where the person in front of me had been stood. And I was suddenly very well aware that it was their smell. Okay, now I perhaps need to describe this person. Okay, he was an old boy. He'd got no hair. I think he'd left his teeth at home. He was bent over. He was a sort of an almost like a 60 degree angle. His walking stick could scarcely walk. His walking stick, well, I could hear it groaning under his weight. And I've got to be honest, as I looked at him, I thought, I don't know if he's got enough life left in him to make it to the front of the queue. He was an old boy. However, he was rocking a fragrance. When I say rocking, it was kicking off him. Now, it's not the sort of smell that you'd associate with someone that old. Although this particular scent, I would. Okay. And as I smelt it, I thought, I've either got this fragrance or I've had it before. And I was like intrigued as to what it was. And I was like racking my brains. I couldn't quite put a name to it. Anyway, he, he got served. And then as he walked past me, I caught it again. I thought, do you know what? I've got so much respect for this old boy. I mean, when I say he walked past me, he literally shuffled past me at half a mile an hour. And I almost felt like offering him a help to his most ability scooter outside. But okay, I was full of respect. A, because he smelt good, and B, because it was a fragrance which it was kicking, and he was he was obviously filling the post office with his smell, and I was absolutely, I was suddenly, he became my hero, even though I don't know whether he was gonna make it to the end of the shop. Okay, so when I got home, I thought, right, I've gotta find him. So I went through all my collection, and I thought, there was a two or three which I sort of narrowed, and I sprayed him, I thought, yes. This is it. Okay. An absolutely legendary fragrance. It's called Azaro and it's made by Loris Azaro. It's Azaro Pour Hom. Okay. Most people will have never even heard of this because it's an old school. We're talking antique fragrance. This is probably one of the very first gentleman's fragrances. This book, Gentleman's Fragrances, is almost on the map. This is like the building block. This is what all the other fragrances that we have these days are built on. However, it's a very old school smell. I'm going to say this was around in the 70s and it was big, you know, a lot of guys wore it in the 70s. It was around in the 80s. It tailed off in the 90s, it lost its popularity, it became very sort of 
too old school and by the time we hit the year 2000 you know what nobody saw this because it was such an old school scent and all the contemporary scents came out and sort of knocked this into the background however okay this guy was rocking this fragrance and i reckon even though he was probably in his 80s I reckon as a young man, he bought this fragrance and there's a chance that he has worn this fragrance almost religiously every day of his life because it's that kind of fragrance. It's a signature scent. It's, it's a scent. It's a bit like, okay, these days we've got something like Bleu de Chanel, which is your massive all-rounder. It's a lovable fragrance. This, back in the 70s, 80s, this was your, your lovable fragrance. This was your all-round sort of guy. This is, you could wear any season, any age. Okay, right, and I reckon this guy had bought this as a young man and he'd rocked it all his life. And I, he probably wasn't even aware that someone else like me was like, wow, he's become a hero because he was rocking this scent, kicking it into the post office. It was filling, it was awesome, and I was blown away. Okay, let me tell you a bit about this scent. Let's have a cheeky little spray first of all, so I can... This is nothing like anything you can buy these days. Your One Million, your Sauvage, your Bleu de Chanel, your Amani Code, is, this is nothing like it. However, they've all got elements of this because I think this, I say it's a building rock. rock. So what have you got in here? You've got lemon, you've got leather, you've got geranium, which is awesome because it's that tanginess, that tangy floral. You've got, okay. Essentially, it's a, it's a lavender bomb. Okay, now in the 70s and 80s, a lot of gentlemen's fragrances had lavender in it. It was a really accepted scent. These days, something like One Million, the guy who invented One Million would probably not even know what lavender was. He wouldn't put it in that sort of thing. It's not a contemporary scent. However, it works, and I think it's a very gentlemanly scent. Okay, Loris Azaro. This thing you can still buy, 100 mil will cost you maybe 25 to 35 pound for 100 mil. And okay, what they all do over, here, over the years is they'll, they'll, sell, they'll sell the license to produce this to some uh, third party and the third party will produce it under the license. And yeah, it's watered down, it's not quite the strength, but it's, this is an old bottle. I've only ever had one bottle and as you can see the 100 mil, there's probably about 20 mil left. I've loved it over the years and I've respected it because it's that ultimate old school fragrance. It's not possible not to like it. Would you wear it these days? Probably not, but it's a building block and it's legendary. And I take my hat off to the guy in the post office who was my hero because he was absolutely kicking this around the post office. It was fabulous. And I'd like to thank him for bringing it back to my attention. So, thank you for coming back to this uh, channel. Uh, somewhere down there it says something like subscribe and there's uh, another thing that's got like a little thumb. If you can hit both of those, I would really appreciate it. Um, and see you, take, take care, keep it real, stay safe, and we'll see you for the next one. And thank you very much.